Hello everybody, welcome to Mr Paul's Pantry, especially those new visitors who I'll just give you a little update on this because the reason I've been absent from YouTube for a few weeks now is uh, just after Christmas I had a fall in this very kitchen where I'm standing uh, when head first into one of my, uh, it's, it's a butcher's block actually, a stainless steel butcher's block uh, and I went head first into it and five weeks later after being told everything was okay, although I knew it wasn't, uh, they discovered I'd broken a bone in my neck, which has been affecting my head, my eye, my ear, my jaw. Uh, it is a lot better now. I'm more mobile in the house. I still can't drive. Um, and I still have difficulty moving my head from side to side. That's the reason for this. But I'm going to make this video because I was going to cook this thing for myself anyway. So I thought, well, I'm waiting to make, try and make the video whilst I'm making it. It's something I've made every single year since I started baking, uh, uh, 60 years ago now. Every single year I've made one for the family. Now I'm living alone, I'm diabetic, I'm still going to make it because it's a special treat. It's an Easter cake, also known as a Simnel cake. It's a nice, moist fruit cake, if you like that sort of thing. And it's also a combined with some almond paste. This is almond paste and it's uh, very, very simple. I'll show you how to do the whole thing. The almond paste, the cake and the decorating as well. Okay, and by the way, I have to say a big thank you to all of my returning visitors who have sent so many messages of good, uh, good wishes to me over these last few weeks. I've lost count of them. I tried to answer them all, but it's a physical impossibility. I have enough hours in the day and I can't sit at the computer long enough to do it. So thank you very much anyway. Uh, and I am slowly getting there, although the doctors have told me it will be a long, slow job before I'm back to normal. So I'm going to try and do this video and here are the ingredients. <music> Now remember, all these ingredients will be listed underneath the video uh, and also on my website. So no, don't try to write them down as I'm telling you about them because it makes it very difficult. I will write them all underneath the video, make it very clear. And I will also, by the way, I'm using mixed spice in this. It's a mixture that you can buy in most shops in Europe, but if you can't buy it, I will put underneath a little recipe how you can make your own. Okay, right, so the ingredients for this single cake are, first of all, we've got some self-raising flour, self-raising flour, and I've got some soft margarine, you can use butter or soft margarine, it doesn't make any difference. I've got some muscovado sugar, I've got some quartered glassy cherries, I've got some currants, Sultanas, candied peel, which is mine is just orange peel by the way, three eggs and the zest of a large lemon. Those are the ingredients uh, and some mixed spice of course. Uh, I'll go through that again. It's some soft butter or margarine, muscovado sugar, quartered glass of cherries, Currants, sultanas, candied orange peel, eggs, self-raising flour and the zest of one large lemon and some mixed spice. Okay, let's do it! These are the ingredients for the almond paste to start with. We'll do that first because we will need that halfway through the process of making the cake. So we'll make this first. First of all, I've got some ground almonds. Next, I've got some caster sugar. You can use granulated if you want. It doesn't make any difference. Okay. I use caster sugar uh, only because I buy it in large quantities and I usually have some in the house. And some icing sugar as well with a little lemon juice. That's all we're going to use for this almond paste. Now, I'm going to use this attachment for my mixer. It's called a creaming 
implement. It's got uh, rubber sides here, or rubberized, and it scrapes the bowl as it goes round, which most food mixers don't do. If you're using an ordinary food mixer beater similar to this, then you will have to scrape the thing down, whatever you're making, cakes or anything, uh, a couple of times during the manufacturing of it. Okay, but this scrapes down as we go. So we're going to put in the dry ingredients. So in is going the almonds, the caster sugar, just a little stuck around the dish there, the icing sugar, It's stuck in there as well and the lemon juice I'll just give it a little mix before we put the lemon juice in just to incorporate the, two, uh, the three ingredients and then we're going to add the lemon juice Coming together now, you can see, I think you can see, I'll turn it off in a moment and just show you. I'll turn, just show you how it's coming together. See, it's coming together now into a nice, malleable, usable paste. There we are, that's it. That's all it needs um, in a moment. Get a bowl scraper, I'll get one out of the door. I haven't got one, but I'll show you how what it looks like. That's how it finishes up. So you can see it's nice and soft, easy to mould with. It's a little bit sticky, but not too sticky. Okay. Now we'll get on with making the cake. So the first thing we need is an 18 centimetre cake tin. I'm using a loose bottom one. I've greased it and lined it with some parchment. And that's the first thing we need to do. Now we're going to put all the ingredients into a mixing bowl. It's not necessary to use a mixer for this. If you have one you can use it. If you haven't it doesn't matter. Okay. So all the ingredients are going to go in here together. So that's the flour, the butter, the sugar, The mixed, uh, the orange peel, I haven't used mixed peel, I've used orange peel. The currant, the sultanas, the quartered glass of cherries, scent of a, zest of a large lemon, and the three eggs. So there they are all in the bowl together. We're going to mix them together now, give them a good blend till they're all well incorporated. This will take you a few minutes, but don't worry about it. Just keep mixing, it'll all come together nicely. Now, in real time, I timed that, didn't leave you watching all the time, but I've timed that and in real time, it was exactly three minutes. And there it is, nice cake mixture, just dropping off this spoon there, as it should do. I've added no liquid, no milk, nothing like that, just the three eggs. That's the only liquid that's gone in there. Now what we need to do is to come back to the almond paste. Back to the almond paste and we're going to use some of this, probably half of it say, and 
and we're going to roll it out. I'll just put a little flour on there. You can use icing sugar on it if you want. It's just to stop it sticking to the, to the bench, that's all. There we are. Get a little rolling pin. And I'm going to roll that out neatly now until I get a circle about the size of the cake tin, which was, if you remember, 18 centimetres. There we go. That's about, should be about right, I'll just measure that. That's good, that's good to go. Now the next thing we do is we put half the mixture into the cake tin, just half of it. We don't use it all. Because what we're going to do is, let me show you in a moment. I'm making this as simple as I can for you, so you know nothing complicated to do. That's roughly half the mixture gone into there. Let's push it into the corners. There we are. A little more. I'll just put a little more in there just to even it up a bit. And then what we're going to do next is we're going to take the disc of almond paste that we've rolled and we're going to drop it on top of there like that. On top of the mixture. And then we're going to put the rest of the cake mixture on top of that. I'll just get a spatula so I can scrape out the, the residue. I think these were one of the best inventions ever in modern times, was a silicone spatula. You don't leave anything in the bowl. Now this goes on top. All the rest of it. I'm sorry I can't go any quicker. I've got a terrible headache at the minute, so I'm just putting up with this. Never mind. I'll be able to have a rest while it's in the oven, okay? So there we are. Push it to the size of the cake tin. And that's going to go into the oven now for about, I'll just check and I'll tell you because I'm using a different size tin to what I normally use here, I'm sorry about that. This needs to go into the oven uh, for ooh, 150 centigrade we're putting it in for two hours. Uh, and now two hours, I think it'll take a little longer than two hours. I think the last time I made this it was two and a quarter hours, but we'll have a look at it at two hours and see how it looks. So that's going in the oven at 150 centigrade, no fan, for two hours. Okay, and then we'll look at it then. So here we have the finished cake. And what I've done now is I've just melted a very small amount of apricot jam in there. You can use any jam because nobody's going to see it. It just happens that I had some apricot there. I've melted it down in the microwave and I'm going to just brush that along the top there of the cake. And this is purely and simply to stick the marzipan onto, that's all. There's for no other reason. I've rolled out the marzipan that I had left. Before I did that, I took some small pieces of marzipan like this. I weighed them, they're 10 grams each, 10 grams, and I just rolled them round into a nice, nice ball like that, just like that, okay? So I took 11 of those, and what was left, I rolled out the paste, uh, the marzipan, not marzipan, sorry, the almond paste, and I placed it on there like that. 
the jam is only there remember to stick down the almond paste okay now the next thing we do is we just crimp around the edges here to sorry just crimp around the edges here to make it look a little bit neater that's all white sliding about on there I'll take it off there just a minute I'll take it off there. there we are just crimp it like you do the pastry on the pie that's all that's all it needs just so it looks neater than just plumped on top just two fingers and a thumb round we go and then to finish it off we've made these 11 balls of marzipan uh, sorry i keep calling it marzipan it is almond paste marzipan is made differently marzipan is cooked this is raw okay um doesn't make any difference uh when you when you make this uh it's 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 just so simple it's three ingredients it's a uh, four ingredient sugar it's sugar two kinds of sugar uh some ground almonds and of course uh, a little lemon juice now normally people used to put a uh, beaten egg or egg white in it as well because it's not being cooked well the piece that's in the middle of course has been cooked that's inside but this hasn't been cooked so i've missed out the egg so there's nothing worried to, to worry about there and what we're going to do these little balls here by the way i told you before there's a lot of mystery about where it came from this cake and why it's uh, associated with easter and this that and the other i don't know but all I know is that when we were taught to make it, when I was learning to bake all those years ago, these little balls here represented the um, apostles. Only 11 of them because we didn't put Judas Iscariot on. Only 11. And they go around the cake like this. Just like that. You can, if you want, stick them on with a little... Uh, of the jam if you want i'm not going to bother and when we made these in the shop we did make them at easter by the way uh, to, to sell but we made small ones we made them in uh, small small tins well i'll show you the tin we used to make them in it was this this is the tin we used to make them in for in the shop just tiny small ones just for nice little tastes that's right and then we put these 11 balls round there even them out I haven't left a lot of room for that one but never mind there we are 11 of them and in the shop what we used to do we used to pop them now under the grill just to make some little brown on top i haven't got the grill going today but i'm just going to use a blowtorch and just show you just just like that nothing more than that just a nice little coloring on top of the you can pop the whole cake under the grill and make a nice little decoration on top if you want it's not important of course and i'll just go around the edge a little bit like that Here we go. Just a little colouring. It doesn't have to be much. That's it. That's all we're going to do. And now I'll get a nice platter and we'll put it on there and see what it looks like. And I think you'll agree now that does look quite attractive on the table. There we go. That's your Easter cake or commonly known as a Seminole cake.
It's Mr. Paul saying bye for now. I hope you've enjoyed the video. If you like it, go underneath. The, all the ingredients are listed there, by the way. Give it a thumbs up. Leave any comments underneath you want. I do read them all. I try to answer as many as possible. And if you have any questions also, I'll try and answer those as well. So Mr. Paul saying bye for now and I'll see you next time. Bye.